you, Bob. Uh, before I begin my comments, I want to take a moment. You've had the opportunity to acknowledge uh, the participation of my Italian language students from levels one, two, three, and four, who are here with us today on a Saturday, who care enough to come and hear about the Italian culture, the language, and to see what the Commission and the Universality of Italian Heritage Curriculum lesson plans do. And I must tell you, we have multiple representation, not only from the Italian American community, but we have students from Guatemala, we have students from Ecuador, we have uh, a black student who has been with us for three, three years now? Uh, two years, excuse me. And a cross section, which I'm so happy and proud of. How about a round of applause for that? The video that you're going to see was produced uh, under the direction of uh, my fourth year Italian language student, um, Brian XK. Every student has an Italian name. And I'm proud of that fact. And please, sometimes don't ask me what their real names are because I know the Italian name, but I'm not quite sure about the, the real name. In any event, Brian is president, and you'll hear more about this later in my comments, but Brian is president of the Nottingham Italian Club. And I want to show you what he has put together based on the universality of Italian language uh, curriculum lesson plans. Buongiorno classe. Buongiorno professore Campione. E buona giornata a tutti. E buona giornata a lei. Today, I will speak about the universality of Italian heritage curriculum lesson plans for grades K to 12. These lesson plans were developed by the New Jersey Italian and Italian American Heritage Commission in support of the New Jersey State Core Curriculum Content Standards. Several of the topics that we have utilized in conjunction with the teaching of the Italian language is the impact that the lessons have had on incorporating the cultural vision. For one cannot teach a language without teaching the culture and history of that language. And regardless of what it is, whatever nationality that you may, or background may be, you need to know as much as possible about the culture and history of your ethnicity. As our program title suggests, today is appropriate for teachers of a foreign language to not only promote education, but to preserve our Italian cultural heritage history. And in that context, we will talk about some of the things that we have done here over the course of the three, four years that we have been together. For example, Columbus. We will be celebrating Columbus Day on October the 12th in a couple of weeks. The Vela di Colombo is the sale of Columbus, which was erected in 1992 at Liberty State Park. It's a beautiful bronze sale commemorating the different events in Columbus's journey to America. We will talk about and have spoken about immigration. 
and the impact that the immigrants at the turn of the century, particularly, who came to Ellis Island to seek a new world and new opportunities, as many people do today, whether they be coming from Mexico, Haiti, whether they be coming from Syria to try and come into another country in support of a better life for their families. And then, of course, the lynching of Italians, which many people do not know about. That took place in 1890. And HBO, as you know, having shown it in class, did a wonderful video entitled Vendetta. And what did that talk about? It spoke about prejudice. It spoke about the violation of our 5th and 14th Amendments to the Constitution. And then Mona Lisa, written by Diane Hales, in which she who had originally written her first book, La Bella Lingua, The Beautiful Language, now talks about Mona Lisa and the impact that Leonardo had upon the art world. And lastly, our mascot at Nottingham High School, Pinocchio, who we've adopted as our mascot in celebration and in commemoration of our culture. Group. My question to you, sir, is based on some of these topics and lesson plans, that we have utilized. What impact has some of this had upon you in your study of the Italian language? Whether it be Pinocchio, Columbus. Is there someone who is able to tell us what, if any, impact some of this may have had upon you over the course of the three, four years that we have been together studying Italian and the culture of Italy? Giovanna? Well, I was given the opportunity to go to Italy and to France, so I was able, in Italy I was able to see Collodi, which is the homeland of Pinocchio, and in France I was able to see the Mona Lisa. In person? Yeah. Are there other students that can relate and perhaps talk about how the lessons from the universality of Italian heritage have benefited you, and what have you gotten out of it? Angela? Um, the Italian program at Nottingham has shown me that there are many opportunities, not just in the classroom, but in life in general. And I learned a lot of different things about the Italian culture that I never knew before, such as Carnivale and the Epifathy. And I'm very proud to be part of this program because I am Italian, and it taught me so many more things that I never would have learned if I tried to learn it on my own. Very good. Is there someone else that would like to comment about how you have benefited from what the universality of Italian heritage culture has done for you? Christina? Um, well, in our class, usually we didn't only just learn about the mechanics of the language, but we did also learn about the culture. And so, like, the more and more that I learned about it, the more appreciation that I gained from it. So, like, I'm Ecuadorian, so I love my culture, but by you teaching us, I learned to love the Italian culture as well. Now, you've been with us on our Christmas trips to New York, where we've gone to Little Italy, and we went and visited the Italian American Museum, and Dr. Joseph Celso, who founded the museum, talked about the Persepio, right? And obviously, we've gone to the Metropolitan, we've seen the Neapolitan Christmas tree that is displayed there during the Christmas holiday. So, having heard Signora Sangiovino, who has taken those beautiful photographs of the Persepio, you obviously were not aware from a cultural standpoint as to what the Italian craftsmen have created. Am I correct in that assumption? Yes. Very good. Is there someone else that can talk about something we have done from a cultural standpoint that you were not aware of before? 
This class with you, Professor Campione, has changed our perspective in a way no other class would, and I really enjoy myself in this class. You captivate and show an incredible amount of enthusiasm for Italy, and it's truly inspiring. When I studied my own language in Spanish a few years ago, the class was very monotonous. In my Italian class, in this class, I get to not only experience the language, but learn new things of the Italian culture. In this class, you enrich our minds with activities such as reading, writing, and math. And you make sure that you incorporate history and Italian traditions and culture. And also, a few times throughout the year, you also sang a few songs and showed us how Italians do certain things like birthdays and, and just showed us how entertainment works over there. And so I, I really like that. And it showed me a different aspect of different cultures. And it's encouraged me to explore other cultures as well. Excellent. Very good. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad to hear that you've gotten something out of it. I see. Some of you have already mentioned. We hope you enjoy that. Ironically, at the end, uh, you just saw a small segment of the beautiful uh, and perhaps one of the few professional boche courts with its own koi in goldfish pond uh, along with a fountain and proudly I could say the flagpole that houses not only the American flag but the flag of honor that has the names of all 3,050 people who perished in 9-11 and that certainly is a credit to our program. Um, we also have in that court two fig trees that are now producing figs which the students will get to sample. And uh, I, for one, am proud. I, I am also proud of the fact that not only have you met the students, but I'm also proud of the fact that under the leadership of our principal who is here today, who took the time to join us, Mr. Michael Jambaluka. Mike, would you please stand so everyone can see you. <laughs> Unfortunately, Commissioner uh, Bianchi had to leave, but you all saw the beautiful I am an Italian American that I have used in the 10 years that I have been at Nottingham High School. And when people ask me, why are you there, professor, faculty, students, what are you doing here? My reply to them is, I'm giving back. I'm transferring to you the wonderful memories and opportunities I had growing up in an Italian American household with grandparents, parents, mom was born in Italy, and even knowing my great-grandmother who never spoke a word of English. How proud of those opportunities that I was given from high school, learning the Italian language, and I often use as, my, as an example in class, my high school professor, Professor Sernerkia, who when I teach the grammar aspect of the impure S. And when we asked him, impure S, what does that mean, Professor Zanarkia? He says, it's a way of remembering. And I now use that many, many years later. That if the word is masculine, it begins with an S or a Z, and followed by a consonant. You, it's a, you use the uh, definite article, lo, instead of ill. Just an example. But again, bringing back my wonderful experiences. So with that, buongiorno e buona giornata a tutti. Mi chiamo Professor Campione. Sono professore di italiano e capo delle lingue stranieri al liceo di Nottingham in Hamilton. Today I'm going to continue to speak about the universality of Italian heritage curriculum lesson plans for grades K to 12 developed, as you know, by the New Jersey Italian and Italian-American Heritage Commission in support of the New Jersey State Core Curriculum Content Standards. <laughs> Several of the topics that are utilized in conjunction with the teaching of the Italian language is the impact that the lessons have on incorporating the culture of Italy. For one cannot teach a language without teaching the culture and history of that language. 
regardless of what it is, what language you teach. As our program title suggests today, it is appropriate for teachers of the Italian language to not only promote education, but to preserve our Italian cultural heritage and history. In that context, I will briefly speak about La Vella di Colombo that you saw on the video. I have a replica, a bronze replica, that is here in front. That vela is housed at Liberty State Park. It was dedicated in 1992 on the 500th anniversary of Columbus's journey to America. Gino Gianetti, the article that I wrote, who was still a true uh, Michelangelo of the 21st century, who in fact has re renovated and refurbished the Pope's private chapel to which I had the pleasure, along with my wife, to be in numerous times in Rome, Italy. If anyone deserves the honor of discovering America, it should be Christopher Columbus. The world didn't know about the land west of Europe and Africa and its distance until Columbus returned to Europe. True, it wasn't Japan or China, as he thought, but given the available information at the time, no other conclusion could be drawn to him or anyone else. Another wonderful lesson plan that has been utilized in the classroom is that of Italian immigration to America at the turn of the 20th century, and in particular to New Jersey, and what the promise meant for those poor, hardworking, uneducated immigrants who came to America believing that the streets were paved with gold, as you know, to find out that they were the ones who were going to do the paving. As part of this migration, students taken, are taken on a field trip to Ellis Island to see firsthand how immigrants were processed in coming to America. Also, students learned about the prejudice and name calling that Italians face with the lynching, as you heard Dr. Aurora Baldessari talk about, the largest mass murder in the history of America. Of those 11 in 1891 in New Orleans, who were murdered after being falsely accused by a mob of so-called 5,000 upstanding citizens of killing the city's police chief, considered the largest mass lynching in U.S. history. Students, read the article written that I have given you a copy of and are shown the HBO movie entitled Vendetta based on that story that tells how the 5th and 14th Amendment rights were violated to those Italians. Another lesson plan that is part of the universality of Italian heritage curriculum is one dealing with Leonardo da Vinci and the recently published book by Diana Hales entitled Mona Lisa, which third year Italian students are required to read as well as her first book entitled La Bella Lingua. Fourth year Italian students are required to read in Italian Luigi Capiano's Sicilian Tales and the Marquis of Roccaverdina, translated by Dr. Santi Buscemi, Buscemi, who is here with us today. Santi, would you please? <laughs> Santi has been gracious as a professor to come to the school as I invite him to speak about those books that he's translated. Upper class Italian language students learn about the great musical conductor Arturo Toscanini and learn and listen to Italian opera to appreciate the finer musical aspects of Italian culture. As part of our Italian language and cultural program at Nottingham High School, the students have adopted the beloved character Pinocchio, the story written by Carlo Lorenzini, who took the pen name of Carlo Collodi from the town in Tuscany where he and his mother were born. 
as part of our annual trip to Italy each year. Students, parents, and guests visited the town this past April of Colodi and there met with the mayor of Colodi and Pesha to form a gemologio with one another in conjunction with this adoption the Italian program at Nottingham High School has built one of the few, as I told you, existing professional voce courts in the country, if not the only one, which houses a flower, a flowing fountain, fish pond, two fig trees, perennial flower plants, and a flagpole, which holds the American and flag of honor. Each year, to enhance and promote the educational aspects of Italian culture, an annual Christmas trip is planned to New York to visit the Rockefeller Center Christmas Tree, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Italian American Museum in Little Italy founded by Dr. Joseph Schelsa, and the original, the original St. Patrick's Cathedral and the catacombs therein, followed by a wonderful lunch at La Mella restaurant in Little Italy, along with a walking tour of Little Italy, Ferrara's Pastry Shop, and many other Italian shops where students get to enjoy an authentic cannoli. <laughs> Cultural students also learn about La Bifana, Il Persepio, the Nativity Scene, and later Carnavale, where Signora Anita Sandrovino comes dressed in costume and masked to display her beautiful Carnavale and perceptual photographs while students display their own wonderful Carnivale masks that they make and later displayed in the school's library. In February, students learn about the story of San Valentino and make Italian and English Valentine cards to give to loved ones, utilizing the wrappers in the bocce chocolates that are given to them on their birthday as their classmates sing happy birthday in Italian, both in the American and Italian version. Well, what is the American version? Bon compreando a te. What's the Italian version? Tanti auguri a te. They learn both, and they enjoy it. Why? Because they know they're going to get a bunch. <laughs> For St. Joseph's Day, students are treated to sfingi and simple uh, pastries and learn about the Sicilian famine that ended in celebration of St. Joseph and the creation of the St. Joseph table. First year Italian students see the Italian movie Pinocchio, played by Roberto Benigni, and learn a large array of Italian vocabulary words that are part of the movie, and then do a comparison to the Disney version in Italian and English. Second year Italian students learn about the Red Brigade, that terrorized Italy in the 1970s and murdered the former Prime Minister Aldo Moro along with the kidnapping of Paul J. Getty's grandson, Paul J. Getty III. Afterwards, students are shown the Italian movie Io non ho paura, a take on the kidnapping of rich Italian children. As the film leaves the viewer in suspense as to the outcome of the kidnappers, Students must write in Italian, working as movie directors for the Campione Italian Film Studio that's based in Rome, Italy, as to how they would complete the film. Likewise, students hear the story of Luigi Del Bianco, chief carver of Mount Rushmore, portrayed by his grandson Luigi Del Bianco, who was invited to the school for students to learn about his grandfather. Each year, from the school, the Italian flag raising ceremony at the Hamilton Township Municipal Building, hosted by the mayor and Mr. John Scarpati, president of the Mercer County Italian American Heritage Festival Committee, followed by a wonderful Italian luncheon at the Heritage Building. All of this, not to speak, of our selling Italian gelato from our own Italian gelato display case and pizza after school, as well as raising monies for scholarships for students studying Italian by holding our fourth annual Italian night this coming year on Friday, April the 29th, 2016, to which all of you are invited. 
There are just a few of the wonderful curriculum lessons incorporated in the universality of Italian heritage curriculum materials under the leadership and direction of Dr. Gilda Rora Baldassari, who on more than one occasion has visited the school, traveled to Italy with us, and provided insight and learning to our Italian cultural program. How proud we are to call her our friend. On behalf of the students, and I'm going to ask them to stand, Italian club officers, beginning with President Brian XK Bruno, Vice President Valerie Valeria Bravo, please stand, uh, Alessa Lucia Scaglione, Secretary Cristina, who was unable to be with us, and Treasurer Giovanna Pacillo, along with the administration, under the leadership, as you know, of our principal, who you met, we thank you for the opportunity to showcase the Italian program, along with our first, second, third, and fourth year Italian language students who are with us today from the school. Willing and eager to attend this Congress on a Saturday that is being sponsored by the New Jersey Italian and Italian American Heritage Commission. I thank you for your interest, your concern, and what I believe has enabled me to develop a most interesting, educationally rewarding cultural experience to promote the study of the Italian language at Nottingham High School. I thank you, and I know our students thank you. This is our t-shirt. We've adopted Pinocchio as our mascot. Our former student who just graduated actually designed this t-shirt, which we have, that the students... And Otavio, you have your sign, right? No, I think not. All right, let's get off. They wanted to come dressed up because they said, Professor, if we wear the t-shirt, it's not as presentable as getting dressed up. So I said, fine, I'll bring the t-shirt. I'll wear it. So, again, I am so proud, so grateful for the opportunities that I have been given. And hopefully, what we're doing here through the commission and through what Dr. Baldessari has led us, Rural Baldessari has led us on to be able to do these kinds of lesson plans to enrich the lives of these young people. 